naging let us make man tapos in-emphasize ba in our image and what that means is this the significance of this verse is this when God created the birds the animals the planets lahat yan yung ginilakha ng Panginoon lahat yan it was a single entity God pero nung nilikha niya yung tao he started talking about the Trinity and we were made in the image of a relational God kaya tayo, pag inisip mo, ang pinakamahalagang bagay sa buhay natin is actually our relationships. Our relationship with God. Kaya sabi ni Lord, the summary of life, the greatest commandments of all time is love God and love one another. It's all about relationships. Pinaprotektahan niya yung sa iyo niya, alam mo ba? So that they may rule over the fish and the sky and the livestock and all the one and over all. In other words, the whole idea, I have a question for you, no? Siguro yung mga pastor niyo, tama naman yung tinuturo sa inyo, no? Amen? Tama naman. Pero tinan nyo yung sabi, no? So that they may rule over the fish of the earth and the bear. Di ba? I have a question for you. Nung sinabi ng Panginoon ito, Genesis chapter 1 ito, di ba? Alam ba ng Panginoon na si Adam and Eve hindi susundin yung kanyang inutos? Sino yung nagsasabi na alam ni alam na ni Lord na hindi susunod si Adam and Eve? Sino yung sasabing hindi pa alam ni Lord? Sino yung hindi magkataas ng kamay kahit anong sabihin ko? <laughs> so ano yung, ano, yung, ano, yung sag, ano tamang sagot? Alam ba ni Lord? Ooh. Yes, kasi alam ng Panginoon lahat eh, di ba? Yes. So ang tanong, kung alam ng Panginoon na magkakasala si Adam and Eve, ba't di pagkakatiwala lahat sa Kanya? Does it make sense? Because of trust. Di ba? Ba't may pagkakatiwala kung alam na alam niya na hindi naman pala susunod ito mga ito? Because more than us following God, God wants to lay the foundation of relationship. Trust. Tiwala. Na pag walang tiwala, hindi ya ang darang mundo. And so God chooses to trust despite the fact na alam niya hindi mo gagawin yung tatama. Because without trust, you cannot have a relationship. The beginning of all relationships is trust. The business of relating with God does not start with love. Actually, it starts with trusting God. Diba? Kaya ka na born again, binigay mo yung tiwala mo sa Panginoon. That's the foundation. And so when you're making disciples, ang pinagawa mo talaga, tinuturo ang mga isang tao na matutong magtiwala sa Panginoon. Ganun siya kasimple. Pag dinidisciple ko yung mga anak ko, yung anak ko ngayon, kapasak na siya, diba? Siya sabi niya, alam na alam niya, wala siyang pera. Sabi ko sabi sa kanya, alam mo ba, Joshua, dalawa lang ang kailangan mo para ikasal ka. Dalawa lang. Hindi mo kailangan ng bahay, hindi mo kailangan ng pera, hindi mo kailangan ng... Unang-unang kailangan mo may babae kang pakakasalan. Kasi hindi ka pwede ikasal. Dalawa lang ang kailangan mo para ikasal ka. Okay? Kailangan may babae kang pakakasalan. At very important, kailangan mahal na mahal mo yung babae yun. Kasi kung hindi mo mahal yan, hindi mag-work yan. Because the only way you're gonna take care of that girl is if you love her. If you love her so much that you're willing to do anything for her. Dahil alam mo, pag pinakasal ka, mahirap mag-asawa. Yung mga may asawa na kayong umayimay. Pero ano yung sabi ko, mahirap. Pero kung mahal mo yan, if you love her and she's the only one that you love, your marriage will work. Yan lang yung kailangan mo. Number two, faith. Kung meron ka niyang dalawang yan, a woman that you love and faith, kung siya succeed yung marriage mo. Kahit may bahay ka, may lupa ka, may coach ka, meron kang lahat niya. Pag hindi mo mahal yan, at wala kang pananampalataya, your marriage will not work. Because at the end of the day, you have to love that. Ang daming manok nito. Ang daming manok nito. Ang daming manok nito. Ito, ito, ito. I'm naniniwala ko ito. Tip ito sa mga libre ito, libre. Tip ito sa mga lalaki, ano? If you want to have a good marriage, decide that your wife is a better person than you. Tunokin muna nyo yun. Inin muna akong kape kapag iniis nyo yun. The secret to a great marriage is to decide that your wife is a better person than you. Alam mo kung bakit? You know why? Because that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> D. 
The average woman is better than the average man. That's why God never that's why that's why God never said I will make a helper for woman, but he said I will make a helper for man. Got it? Alam ba niyo ang babae mas natural mag-relationship? Kaya pa magiging small group, anong pinakamaraming small group? Mga babae. Because it's natural for women to care. Sino nabubuntis? Sino nag-aalaga ng anak? Sino ang generous? Sino ang kind? Sino ang mahinahon? <laughs> easy. Easy. Merong mga asawa kasi. But... <laughs> Sino ang malakas kumain? Yung mga asawa, mga babae Sino kasi niya ay mas, uh, mas, ano ba, mas, mas strict ha? Or ano ba? Madragon. Uh, it's natural. In other words, if you want to have a great marriage, think about it this way, okay? Just think about my wife is 10 times better than me. Seriously, I have come to the kong, after 31 years of marriage, I finally arrived at the conclusion the secret to a good marriage is to remember my wife is better than me. And because of that, I'm going to love her with all my heart. You know why? It is a reason, the reason, the real reason is selfish. Because pag minahal mo yung babae with all your heart, ipabalik niyo sa iyo yun, yun mabahit siya. Actually, you're the beneficiary. Nakakatawa nga nung araw, di ako naguhugas ng pinggan. Nung naguhugas ako ng pinggan, Yung misis ko, nagkagalit sa akin, huwag ka na maghugas, ako na maghuhugas. Ganun siya kabayan. Hmm. Yung ibang lalaki niya, para sa mga diyata, tama yun. <laughs> Try it first. Now, here's my point, okay? It's about relationships. Life is about relationships. It's about trust. The Bible says that God rested on the seventh day and made the seventh day holy. Pasan niyo yun? Diba? Genesis chapter, ano ba yun? Genesis chapter 2? Tama ba? Nandiyan ba yun natin? Ayun, Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. By the seventh day, God finished the work He had been doing. So on the seventh day, He rested from all His work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, He rested from all the work of creating that He had done. Question. Bakit nagpahinga ang Panginoon? Why would God rest on the seventh day? Napagod ba sa kakagawa ng mga babae? Why would God rest on the seventh day? God rested on the seventh day not because He was tired. God rested on the seventh day because He wanted to sit back and enjoy creation. Alam niyo yung salitang rest, synonymous yan to enjoy. Pag sinabi mong you rested, that means you enjoyed something. Let me give you an example. Kung natulog ka kagabi, Pero hindi mo na-enjoy yung tulog mo, hindi ka nag-rest. Pero kung gumising ka kaninang umaga at nag-exercise ka at na-enjoy mo yung exercise mo, you actually rested. Got it? To rest is to enjoy, to re enjoy is to rest. God rest.
7 seconds pa lang yun Ay, for laps eh 7 seconds pa lang yung takbo natin <laughs> yung recording mo God did not make man on the first day of the week, not on the second day of the week, not on the third, not on the fourth, not even on the fifth day of the week. God made man on the sixth day of the week. Because his intent was, when man woke up on the seventh day, the first thing he would see was not God working, but God resting and enjoying creation with him. The very idea of the entirety of creation is relationship. God rested on the seventh day because He wanted to sit back and enjoy. If God wanted you to work with Him, He would not have created you on the sixth day. He would have created you on the first day. If the intention was for you to work with God, first day pa lang trabaho na kayo dalawa. God's intention was never for you to work with Him. God's intention was you to enjoy a relationship with Him. Because when you have a relationship with Him, you're going to enjoy working with Him anyway. So the point is relationship. Now notice, here's what happens next. Genesis chapter 2. Good morning. Kumain ka na? Kumain ka na? Kanina. Hindi ka pa nagla-lunch. Bakit? What time na ba? What's the plan? Nagpo-por na. Oh. Sorry, ano? Wala sa isip ko, Mark. Wala na lang. Ano? Wala sa isip ko ba? Ano oras nga namin sinundo? 2 o'clock na, no? Mayroong Spanish bread. Spanish bread. Spanish bread. Spanish bread. Amen. Spanish. Okay. Spanish. And the Lord God niya. commanded. Everybody say commanded. Uh -huh. This is the very uh -huh. first time the word command shows up in the Bible. Ito po yung kauna-unaong panahon na binanggit yung salitang command sa buong Biblia. You gotta understand something here, no? When the Bible mentions a word for the first time, that's significant to the meaning and the spirit of that word. Bawa, binanggit yung salitang command sa kauna-unaong panahon the root and the essence of that word is in that word. Now notice, this is the very first commandment in the entire Bible. And notice the spirit of the command. You are free. Think about that. The first commandment in the Bible is not don't smoke, don't eat, don't drink, don't play video games. The first commandment in the entire Bible is you are what? You are free. The word free, by the way, is rooted in the word pre. pre. The word pre is rooted in the word love. love. In other words, when people enjoy a certain freedom, it's because they're enjoying it because someone loves them. Let me explain. Pag meron kayo nakitang something na free, hindi ko talagang free yun. 
There are only two kinds of things that are free. When you get something for free, it's either it has no value. Pagpunta ka sa mall, maybe free, ibig sabihin walang value yun. Or, someone paid for the value of something you got. My children enjoy a lot of value and they get it for free because I'm the one paying for it because I want, I love them. This whole idea of freedom is rooted in love. And God is saying you're free. And by the way, this is not an, a, a privilege. Huh? This is a commandment. Utos ng Panginoon ito, you are free. Free. The whole essence of relationship is to give you freedom. If you only follow God because you're afraid of God, that's not freedom. If God came here not as a carpenter's son, but came as a general, and said, if you don't follow him, I'm going to send you to heaven to kill you, and you're going to follow him, that's not freedom. Not out of love, but out of fear. Diba? Na ano yan? Yun, yun yung, but God's not interested in you. Kasi sa religion kasi, God's interested in you you understanding that He first loved you. Diba? So He says, you're free. Now notice what He says, you're free to what? Can you imagine the very first commandment of the Bible is bagay in San Fernando, Pampanga? You're free to eat. Do you know what eating signifies? Enjoyment. Amen. <laughs> Eating is actually <laughs> man's greatest enjoyment. And so God was saying you're free to enjoy. The very essence of this relationship is you're free to enjoy. It doesn't only say you're free to enjoy, you're free to enjoy any tree in the garden. Not just one tree, the graciousness and the magnitude of the love of God, you're free to eat, to enjoy. From any tree, are you discipling people into freedom, or are you discipling them to religious works and legalism? You're free to enjoy God. That's the first commandment. Think about that for a minute. The very first commandment in the entire Bible. The Spirit of God is saying, "I want you to be free. I want you to understand how much I love you." Now, notice Genesis chapter three. Ananyare. Because of this freedom, Adam and Eve gets tempted by the devil. Remember that? Alala nyo yung... Benji. Sila, Julie, and Alcris. Dito sila nakatira? Dito yung abo na. Oo, dito, dito. Dito yung Julie, sila. Dito pa itong sila. Oo. Actually, itong susunod na to, yung merong guard yun, ipano yun. Dito, dito ko gusto maghanap ng bahay kasi dito part na to mabaho to kasi mm, paggabi ah baboyan to eh kevin here paggabi ah baho yun kayo baboyan man baboyan ah ito baboyan yan yan okay, okay. Ba, eh, magsakit pero na paglampas mo doon wala na niliya kaya dili mo magkaya kasi akong friend dili ka stay Excuse kaya mura kasi amoy tae mura siya yan layo pag maabtan ang baho iya sa unahan pa ka ayun na abot good ang baho ko wala silang pang antay yan chapter 3 punta tayo sa verse 2 The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Yan ba sinabi ng Panginoon? No. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? You are what? Anong sabi ng demonyo? What did he do? Who is the author of legalism? Is it God, or is it the devil? Sabi ng Panginoon, You are what? Ang sabi ng demonyo? You must not. Notice that they're saying the same thing. You're free to eat from anything in the garden. The devil said, in the middle, and you must not touch it. Dilagdagan pa ng batas. You, now you can't even touch it. Or you will die. Notice also, na binawasan niya yung, ano, yung, yung sagot. Are you here? Now, ito sabi, no? Now, Ang nangyari, verse 6, chapter 2, verse 6, 3, verse 6, The woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and peace of the eye, and also desire for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. 
Ang ah, equipment pala dito, mga kapatid dito. dito. Yung, no? Ano ba yung pinakamalang pinili ng bahay siya ano ba? SM sa Angeles. Si Alvin. Pero bang eh, sa Fernando? Oh, okay, SM, di ba? Punta ka ng SM, bawa ako si Henry C. Ay, or Luke. Anak kita. At sabi ko sa iyo, you are free anak ng buong mall sa iyo. Give me picture. Ha? Ano? Si Alvin. Alvin. Buong mall sa iyo. Doon, doon, doon sa, doon sa merong Alam mo? security. Kaya lang, meron Kinuha lang. Kinuha ka niya, Lupa. Cotton candy. Ah, Sino na kanya? Walo kong kakainin yun. Kinuha niya niya rin ako eh. Ano mong ginawa ng anak? Kinain niyo cotton candy. Because when you don't trust God's word, we become stupid and foolish. Can you imagine exchanging the freedom of the entire mall for one stick of cotton candy? That's what happens when you don't trust God. Following? Now, I believe, ito ang paniwala ko, no? you don't have to agree with me. Ang paniwala ko, si Adam and Eve, si Eve didn't want, I feel like Adam wanted to eat the fruit first. Okay? Kaya lang, ang nangyari, ang feeling ko, sinet up niya si Eve para si Eve muna yung kumain, para magkita siya kumamatay o hindi. And then, this, I really believe this. I believe this with all my heart. Huh? Ang feeling ko, kasi remember, sino kausap ni Lord about the, the, the command? Okay, yeah, yeah. Si Adam. So, hindi alam ni Eve yung usapan. Yeah. Ang responsibility ni Adam, i-disciple niya si Eve. Alam ba niyo kung saan nag-umpisa ang discipleship? Sa bahay. It was his job to take the word of God and make Eve trust the word of God. That's discipleship. Pang feeling ko, Adam was not trusting God as much. You cannot disciple people and teach them to trust God if you don't trust God yourself. Ang paniwala ko, si Adam yung gusto kumain, kaya lang, hindi siya sigurado. Dahil sabi sa kanya Lord, you will certainly die. So sinabi niya kay Eve, you're not gonna serve, you will die. Pero not certainly. Baka merong room na hindi ka mamatay. And ang feeling ko, kaya niya ginawa yun, para makita niya kung makamatay si Eve o hindi. Tinta kita namatay, hindi ako kakain. Parang hindi kayo naiiniwala sa akin. Kinatest niya. Pastor, parang nanayata yung kinikwento mo. Parang heretical. Do you know why I believe that? Because in Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, it says it. In verse 6, it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and pleased with her, and also it, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her. He was standing there watching her. Kung baga sa mall, ginawa yung cotton candy na huli ng CCTV camera. Kung yung CCTV camera doon sa Garden of Eden, pag pan out doon, makikita mo si Eve, hawak-hawak yung frutas na gano'n. Pag pan out, nasa taas ng hagdan si Eve, ang may hawak ng hagdan si Adam. Inaantay lang niya. Buhay pa. Do you ever wonder why women don't trust men? Why? Because men use women. Discipleship begins at home. Discipleship begins with leaders in homes that trust the Word of God, that don't use the members of their homes, that actually love the members of their homes. The first love God so that they can love the members of their home. And so what happened here, this is a picture of discipleship 101. Trusting the Word of God and teaching the people around you to trust the Word of God. Dito po mag-uumpisa yan. Yan ang umpisa ng discipleship. This is a picture of discipleship is relationship. The most basic relationship on earth, a husband and a wife. Do you trust God? And can you make the members of your family trust God? Tuloy natin. Ah, medyo mabigat ng konti ito, pero okay yan. Okay? Now, chapter 3 verse 8. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. So ito na si God. He's coming. Tanong, 
Nakita ba ni Lord na kinain ni Adam and Eve yung prutas? Of course, siya may ayon ng CCTV camera. Eh. Hindi ba siya may ayon ng mall? But here, uh, here, 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 about the CCTV camera. The CCTV camera of God is not in the mall. The CCTV camera of God is inside your heart. Iniisip mo pa lang yan, alam na ni Lord yan. Ganon siya kalupit, ganon siya katindi, ganon siya ka-amazing. Iniisip mo pa lang gumawa ng kalokohan, alam na niya yan. Kaya nga kailangan ko si Jesus. Kasi sa totoo lang, within your heart, apart from God, you're wicked. Pag tinanggal mo si Lord at nasalta ng Panginoon sa buhay ng isang tao, we are very capable of fooling ourselves. Very capable. That's why we need Him. So ito sabi ha, sabi nagtago sila among the trees. Anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa discipleship? Ito yung disciple, yung small group leader, imbis na tulungan yung small group member, ginamit pa. Anong ginawa ng Panginoon? You watch Discipleship 101. Okay? Sabi ni Lord, Open your Bible, Adam. Mag-praise and worship ka. The church ka ba, Adam? No. That, that, what, what did God do? Ito, sabi. But the Lord God, verse 9, called to the man. Anong ginawa ni Lord? When you're discipling somebody, don't preach, ask questions. Where are you? The first move of God in discipleship is not to preach, but to ask a question. Sometimes tayo, pag disciple gusto mo turo ng turo ka agad, tanong mo muna, where are you? Where are you in your trust of God? Where are you in your relationship? Where are you in your heart? Where are you? Yung ano ba? Yung police. Where are you? Yung pangano ng speed limit. No, huwag naman pupunta sa tao. Where are you? Hindi naman ganun. Pag kinausap mo yung tao, saan ka na ba? Naus na naman relasyon mo kay Lord. Do you know that much of discipleship, itong ginagawa ko, hindi nyo trabaho to, trabaho ng picture to. Ang trabaho nyo, alamin nyo, where are you? Nasaan ba yung tao ngayon? Where are you? Yung anak mo, gusto mo yung disciple, where are you? By the way, kung tatlong anak mo, iba-ibang where are you yan. Yung pangalan yung anak ko, is it a different where are you? Yung pangalawang anak ko, yung different din. Pangatlo, ibang where are you yan. Don't disciple them in a program. Disciple them in a relationship. Where are you? Nasaan ka na? Yung isa, sabihin niya sa'yo, ang problema ko ngayon, ito. Yung isa, sabihin niya, ito. Yung isa, ang issue niya, ang pride. Yung isa, impatience. Iba-iba yan. Your job is to find out where are you. Now notice the answer of Adam in verse 10. I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid. Lumabas yung katotohanan ng labas ng puso. When you break the trust of God, pag naputo ng relasyon natin sa Panginoon, ito ang nangyayari. I was afraid because I was naked so I hid. It says fear, I was afraid because I was naked, insecurity, I'm insecure about who I am and I hid. Cover up and lies. That's the world of mankind when you don't have the trust of God. Pag na-break yung trust sa Panginoon, it doesn't matter how long a Christian, if this can happen to me. If I woke up this morning, I didn't put my trust in God, fear will come. Insecurity will come. Cover up and lies will come. So when you're discipling somebody, tinuturuan mo yan magtiwala sa Panginoon because pag na-restore yung tiwala sa Panginoon, makawala yung takot niyan mawala yung insecurity niya. Pagpunta ka, di ba lahat tayo may insecurity tayo. Pagkatiin mo, oh, puro mga importante yung tao to. Nai-insecure ka. Pero pag kilala mo ang Panginoon, nawawala yung insecurity mo. Pag gumigising tayo, may takot tayo. Ano kaya mayayari sa anak ko? Ano kaya mayayari sa negosyo ko? Ano mayayari sa ganito? Pag mayroon tayong Panginoon, hindi tayo natatakot. And so, when you're discipling somebody, what are you doing? You're teaching people to learn to trust God. Yun lang ang tinuturo. Tsaka yung trust ng Panginoon, buong buhay mo yan. Yung kala mo, gano'n na ng victory weekend dyan ha. Gano'n na ng one-to-one. Nakalimang one-to-one na nga sa akin yan eh. Ba't ganyan pa yan? Because trust is not only one-to-one. Trust is a lifelong journey. May tiwala ka sa Panginoon, nabibigyan ka ng trabaho, pero wala kang tiwala na pagagalingin yung anak mo. May tiwala ka sa Panginoon, pagpagaling yung anak mo, pero wala kang tiwala na ililigtas kayo sa paha. In other words, it's a never-ending journey of trust. 
What is discipleship? It's growing people in their relationship with God by deepening their trust with God. Teaching them how to pray. Teaching them how to access God. Teaching them to believe God. Yan lang po ang kahulugan niyan. When you don't succeed, life becomes the daily management of fear, insecurity, and lies. Ang buhay ng tao sa mundo, araw-araw, pag wala ang Panginoon, gumigising yan, minamanage na niya yung lahat ng kinatatakutan niya, lahat ng insecurity niya, at lahat ng kasinumulingan niya sa buhay niya. And these three come together, by the way, very, very well. Yan ang trabaho ng demonyo. Keep you in fear. Because when you're in fear, you'll be insecure. When you're insecure and fearful, you'll cover up. Wow. And even in churches, uso yan. Dating yung tao, hallelujah, praise the Lord, brother, pero actually he's in fear and insecurity. When you're discipling somebody, you're discipling him in learning to trust God para matanggal yung fear niya. Kung hindi, ang management ng buhay mo, minamanage mo lang yung fears mo at yung insecurities mo and your cover-ups. So here's what it says. Where are you? Now, verse 11, notice, ha, ito si Lord. Ano yung step 2 ni Lord sa discipleship? He said, Who told you you were naked? Tanong pa rin. Hindi pa rin siya nagpipreach. Yan, tanong pa rin. You know, minsan kasi tayo, gusto mo na kagad turuan yung tao ng Bible. Who told you? Sino mga pinakikigyan mo? Who do you listen to? Who do you trust? You haven't won the trust of the person yet. Actually, if you're going to reach out to somebody, alam mo pinakaiparad sa isang tao pag nireach out mo, win his trust. Dahil pag na-win mo yung tiwala ng taong yan, magkakanaw ka ng opportunity to put in the word to him. Tapos ano sumunod? Ano, ano sabi niya dito? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Tanong na naman. Can you imagine? Tatlo sunod-sunod, puro tanong lang. What was he doing? He was trying to find out what is the truth. The hardest thing to do in discipleship, by the way, is to get people to face the truth. The hardest thing. The hardest thing in my life is to face that I'm not a very good man. The hardest thing to face is that my marriage is not as good as I thought it was. The hardest thing, and you know why the truth is so important? Because it's the truth that sets people free. Pag walang truth ang tao, then there's no basis for what to change. Pag merong truth ang tao, then alam niya, ito mali, kailangan baguhin ko to. That's really what you're doing. And you, by the way, yung truth, hindi mo rin kayang gawin yan. You need the Holy Spirit to do that with you. In the meantime, ang kailangan mo lang, kaibigan mo siya. Reach out to Him. Change. Be there for Him. Truth. Change. Sometimes yung truth, akala mo, ma- ma- sinabi mo, no? yung iba, di ba? Sinabi na na, na yung pastor yan, 15 times na. Bakit di pa nakukuha? Hindi niya narinig. You know why? Hindi pa niya panahon marinig. So in re- building a disciple, you have to wait and you have to be patient. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to that person. Ano plano niyo? Bahay. Bahay, uwi ka na rin. March? March? Ano plano mo? Huh? Saan ka ngayon? Ano? Asa ka ka ron? Sa center. Sa center? Hmm. Sa center na lang pala tayo. Ako oh, nakapagpagkas eh. Laki ng problema niya sa cellphone. Ah! Ay, yun na lang ako kag-gets. Manong gari o? Bago man. Bago sila or what? Na-renovate. Ay? Okay. Nandiyan na raw yung mascot.
point mo lang kaya ka pumunta ng Marawi? Mahatid yung pong? Ama, ganun. May mamit si mama. Ah, yun talaga Mapakilala yung... Mapakilala yung twin sa kanya. Ah, yun talaga yung goal na. Okay. Tapos na. Aray. Sorry. Mag-short <laughs> yun. Hindi short. Short yun. Maataas yung ano. Hindi ba si... Hindi expert ka ba si... Namugay ano dito ko. Mahiwagang sasakyan ni Kuya. Kailangan talaga mahukay ko na yan ba? Matanggal ko na yung buhangin para... Hindi niya kasi ginagal. Hindi niya kasi ginagamit ito. Sasakyan eh. Ibang nakipark na lang, tinampak na. 